Hi everyone! If you watched the video about the simple transition between images using a noise texture, you surely noticed how we used a simple algorithm for a rather impressive effect. Now let's try something a bit different. Instead of a regular transition, we'll create a burning effect for our scene, which will be a somewhat more complex algorithm. Let's do it. Alright, so once again, I will create a new scene in Godot Engine and insert a prepared image into it. So right click, create new scene, let's call it burn. Okay, and the prepared image, it should be right here. Let's drag it. So Godot automatically created a sprite to the node for which I will set the correct properties in the inspector. So let's set transform to zero, zero position, I mean, and offset, let's cancel centered. And here it is. Okay, and of course, I need to set a new shader material. Eh, sorry. <laughs> What? Okay, now it's scrolling. <laughs> Shader material right here and click it and select a new shader that should be canvas item. Let's call it burn GD shader and I'll put it to the shaders folder. Create and click to open in the editor. So as usual, I will start uh, by deleting everything except the fragment function, which I actually do every time. So let's do it. Delete vertex and delete light. I will start by adding uniform parameters whose purpose I will gradually explain as I will write uh, the rest of the code. So first, let's insert a parameter for the noise texture, which just like in the previous video about simple transitions will be the basis of our effect. Uniform Sampler 2D noise texture and give it the usual hints. So default black and repeat enable. This time I think that we won't repeat this texture, but it is just a good habit to have it here just in case that the noise texture would be scaled down or we change the aspect ratio in the future. Uh, by the way, I used uh, hint default black, which essentially won't be necessary because we will immediately fill the texture using noise texture 2D. It's just another habit to set the default value to a black texture. So I'll do it right now. Let's open shader parameters and we have noise texture. I will assign new noise texture 2D, click it and select for the noise new fast noise light. Nothing else is needed, all other parameters will remain with their default values. So let's move on. I will need a parameter to control the amount of the original texture that had been burned by our effect. This is a good thing because we will later be able to set this parameter from a script, thus having full control over the effect. Right here, uniform float, let's call it burn burn amount uh, with a hint range and the default value I will set to 0 because it will go from 0 to 1 where 0 means this original image and 1 will be completely burnt out. Now let's set the burn color. I chose an orange shade as the default value which looks quite good in the final effect. Uniform VEC3 for, for an RGB color, burn color, and source color, which simply tells the inspector to show a color picker to set our color, change the value. Uh, um, and this should be a shade of orange, wait for it. Yeah, here it is, great. And finally, two parameters with which we will control something like the burn level and the corresponding distortion of the transition between the image and the black screen. So, 
right here uh, uniform float I'll call it this edge as a short for distortion edge with another hint range and the initial value 0.05 and I think it was again from 0 to 1 with 0 0.01 as the step and uniform float warp factor I will get to it later just shortly when you burn a paper it is somehow distorted on the edge of the burned effect and the rest of the paper should be a bit wrinkled or something like that so this is what the warp factor will ensure and again 0.3 and the same hint range great so we are done with the parameters now we can proceed to writing the fragment function the first thing uh, first thing i will do is assign the vector uv of the current pixel to a new vector uv uh, in lowercase in case i want to make any changes to these coordinates later on so that would be vec2 uv is uv simple as that now we want to fetch the pixel value from the noise texture since it is grayscale as we can see right here we only need to use the value of one of the rgb components for example the red component so it would be float burn pixel is function texture applied on the current texture which is this image and no no sorry cancel that noise texture i was talking about noise texture so this what we need to use right here and the uv coordinates and as i said the red component okay for now i will do it in this simple way later on we'll see that additional adjustments are needed but i'll get to it in a moment now I will fetch the pixel value from the original texture, now I really do that, and blend between these two values into the resulting variable color. We will control the ratio between them using the burn amount parameter. So vec3 color in lowercase would be the pixel now really from the texture we have in front of us with UV coordinates and RGB because the function texture returns vector 4 and we don't need the alpha channel so we take only the RGB components and finally assign it to the internal color which is vector 4 so we need to combine that with the default alpha set to 1 and as I said the combination so it would be a mix which is a GLSL function for linear, linear interpolation and we need color multiplied by the burn color so we just give it this orange tint this is the first uh, argument the second one is just the color and as i said the mix amount would be the burn amount very well and now we need to multiply that with burn pixel which we uh, we took from our uh, what's wrong with the code completion i don't know copy paste burn pixel from the from the uh, noise texture and the final value is one for alpha okay and something is definitely wrong here yeah too many brackets now go right okay i mean uh, this is definitely not the final effect but uh, the code is working and we have something right here so we're starting to see something but it's more of a hint of the future effect as i said in its current form it is definitely not usable mainly because the noise texture is too prominent as we can see right here in the inspector to improve this we'll create a mask defined using the smooth step function which will then apply to the final calculation right here float mask would be as i said smooth step of burn amount minus 0.1 to give it some edge uh, second argument would be simply burn amount and we apply that on the burn pixel okay and as i said we'll use it 
in the final calculation of the color value. So instead of multiplying by burn pixel, we'll multiply that by the mask. Okay. And now when I change the burnt amount, burn amount in the in the inspector, we can see that something is happening. That's better and resembles the effect from the previous video. However, we want the image uh, to gradually burn from a left to right. So it's time to improve the first line where we obtain the burn pixel value, this one. Instead of simply taking the current pixel, let's add UVX to the calculation. So it's now it depends on the X coordinate. We are starting to see it now. Yeah, something like that. It's not quite there yet, because we want the value 0 to mean no burning and 1 to represent complete burning. We'll make a few more adjustments to achieve that. These numbers are the results of my experiments and if you use a texture with different dimensions, you may need to adjust them slightly. So I will just write here what I finally created. It would be this uh, and R minus 0.5 first bracket and plus twice the x coordinate of the uv coordinates of the pixel and finally divided by 3 and 0.15 add it okay let's take a look right now 0 and 1 now the transaction looks fine. However, it turned out that the burn amount value, this one, isn't quite suitable for the final mix right here, because we don't want the original image to be displayed through an orange filter, as you can see right now, if we set the value to zero. So once again, we'll use the smooth step function and add two new variables right after the mask, so I will call them distortion and it would be a smooth step applied on again the burn amount minus 0.2 and burn amount increased by the dist edge which is uh, uh, this uniform parameter we didn't use yet, now we need it and as I said, it's applied on the burn pixel. This is the first one, and the second one would be called transition. Transition, and it's simply the same value, but um, as an argument of the power function. So distortion to the power of, let's say, 10, to give it some nice a nice edge. We will leave the variable distortion as it is for now and simply use only transition in the final mix. So instead of burn amount I will copy and paste transition. Okay the color is correct and if I move this slider now it's burning beautifully. Thanks to the smooth step function we filtered out most of the chaos from the noise texture and with the power function we further emphasize the foundation of the burnt effect. You can see the result in the best way right here in the inspector where it shows only the burning effect without the texture. However, one detail is still missing because we want to achieve the effect where the burnt paper curls at the burn spot and still has slightly highlighted edges. So now let's use the distortion. I uh, will do it here, another line, float warp, let's call it warp, and the calculation would be simply 1 minus the warp factor, which is the final uh, uniform parameter we defined right here, increased by, again, the power function applied on the distortion, and now to the power of only two, so we don't overdo it, multiplied by the warp factor. Okay, and finally 
UV in this calculation would be multiplied by this warp value. Let's wait for it. Yeah, let me just show everything and play with that. Yeah, now it looks exactly like in the video at the start of this tutorial. And the shader is done. The default settings right here that we can see in the inspector have worked best for me. But anyone, of course, can adjust the effect by changing the parameters. Let's try some adjustments. For example, if we increase the list edge, it is definitely distorted a lot, a lot more than before. And we can see the remnants of the original image right here. Or if I play with the warp factor, increase it. Now it's a lot more uh, distorted. And if I put it to zero, it's just the effect without this, without this uh, additional, uh, additional effect, I guess. Cool. That's all. And thank you very much for watching. If you clicked like or subscribe, I appreciate it even more. And if you have any ideas how to further enhance this effect, I'd love to read all the comments under this video. By the way, uh, our point-and-click adventure game Whispers of Prague will be released on September the 20th uh, this year, 2024, on Steam. So if you would be so kind and add it to your wishlist, it would tremendously help us during the game launch. You can find the link in the description of this video. In any case, have a wonderful time and see you in the next video.